Hello everyone, my name is Anthony, and today let's talk all about Ethereum gas. In the simplest of terms, gas are the internal units it costs to run an instruction on the Ethereum virtual machine. An instruction command is called an opcode, and since it takes multiple instructions to run a program, we're charged per each opcode. However, not all opcodes are equal, so we're also charged by how hard one is to complete. Let's start by looking at a list of opcodes and their relative gas costs. Before I show you this, I want to say I'm not sure how up to date these lists are as far as pricing and completion, but they're the most informative examples I've found. I have links for them in the description so you can check them out for yourself. The first page is a list of opcodes and descriptions of what they do. As you can see, we have some math operations such as add, subtract, and multiply, some comparative operations such as less than and greater than, a SHA-3 compute operation, some operations that get information from the Ethereum blockchain, and many more. Next, on this page, we see a list of gas costs of each opcode. The Ethereum developers are the ones who decided these values. The goal is fairness. To make harder opcodes cost more than easier opcodes, as different operations use more time and resources. For example, a SHA-3 base operation costs 10 times more than an adding operation. Notice I said it costs 10 times more instead of 27 more gas. I say this because the cost of opcodes is based on its difficulty to complete. This is telling us the SHA-3 base operation is 10 times harder to complete than an add operation. For example, when you interact with the contract, you're essentially sending a bunch of opcodes to complete. Let's say our example contract uses use the add, LT, SHA-3 base, and address opcodes each one time. The total gas used would be 38 because add use 3 gas, LT use 3, SHA-3 base use 30, and address use 2. However, contracts don't need to stop executing code after completing it once. One benefit of using gas is that we can have a Turing complete contracting language without worrying about a contract basically DDoSing the network by using up its resources. When you make a contract, you can set the gas limit for that contract, which is the maximum amount of gas a contract can use. Once a contract uses up all of the gas, the contract can no longer run. This mechanism also helps prevent amateur coders from accidentally spending all of their ether on looping contract. Not only is there a gas limit for your personal contracts, but each block has its own gas limit as well. You can compare this to the one megabyte block size limit in Bitcoin. With Bitcoin currently only one megabyte of transactions can be completed every 10 minutes. With Ethereum, currently around 4.2 million gas can be used per block or about every 10 seconds. If either the contract gas limit or the block gas limit are exceeded, the contract progress is rolled back. However, the gas remains spent. As far as I can tell, the miners decide the block gas limit, and the network gas limit we see on pages like ethstats.net is the average block gas limit from past accepted blocks. Anyway, having the gas limit lets Ethereum do some cool voting too. In the case of the DAO attack, Ethereum decided if it would soft fork based on the block gas limit size. All miners who chose a block gas limit of 3.1 million or lower were considered to have voted yes in the soft fork. If the actual block gas limit at block height 1.8 million was below 4 million gas, the soft fork would proceed. So how do we determine the price per gas? Well, the price per gas is determined by a free market economy. Miners set the gas price they're willing to accept and contract creators set the gas price they want to pay. Somewhere in the middle is our current gas price. And the current address gas price is 20 Shannon or about nine millionth of a penny. To figure out gas cost, you simply multiply the gas price by the gas used. Gas price times gas used equals gas cost. In our example contract that used 38 gas, it would be 38 multiplied by 20, which is 760 Shannon, or about 2.43 millionth of a cent. 
of course, real life contracts would be much more complex and cost more than that. The Ethereum wallet figures out all of this for you. However, it does it in a backwards and complicated way that makes it harder to explain in my video because it prices things in ether instead of gas. Here we can set the estimated fee we'll pay to complete this transaction. A transaction costs 21,000 gas. Just like how opcodes have a static cost, so do transactions. You can think of a transaction as a program that runs on the Ethereum virtual machine. This middle number is our gas limit, the maximum amount of gas we want our transaction contract to use. At the bottom, you can see our cost per 1 million gas. After all that, you might be thinking, why do we use gas instead of paying for opcodes with Ether? Ethereum has its own cryptocurrency built into it, doesn't it? And I get confused by this all the time, but the answer is really quite simple. If we priced opcodes in Ether, we would have to continuously reevaluate the opcode cost list as the price of Ether fluctuates. If the ad opcode costs one Ether and one Ether is worth $1 today, what happens if tomorrow Canada makes Ether their national currency and the market price of Ether shoots up to $500? Now all opcodes cost 500 times more than they did yesterday. Pricing in gas provides more stability and resistance to price fluctuations. When we use gas, we can set static prices per opcode and let the market figure out how much Ether they want to pay for them at the time of transaction. Hopefully this video didn't make you more confused. For additional reading, there is a wonderful post on the Ethereum Stack Exchange that I have listed in the description. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and share this video. If you would like to support me, you can donate Bitcoin, Ethereum, or Dash to the addresses on screen and in the video description. Lastly, follow me on Twitter where I post my channel updates. Thank you and have a great day.